this session. Yeah. So um, we'll be talking about how to boost kids' immunity, and I'm going. I'm sharing my screen now. So. Is my screen visible to everyone? Can you, uh, Miss Renu, can you please tell me if my screen is visible to you? Yes, it is. Okay. It is. Great. Parents, let's uh, give Sonali a thumbs up whenever um, she needs an acknowledgement. It's, <coughs> it's great that way. Thank you. All right. So um, the topic for today is how to build kids immunity in the post COVID era, because, you know, I have a lot of, you know, my, one of my clients usually come up and tell me that, you know, they can take care of their immunity, but they struggle with their kids and they are more, you know, scared and skeptical about their immunity. So we, we will first understand, uh, we will first understand what are we going to be discussing here? So firstly, we'll be doing, we'll be understanding the basics of how our immune system works. It's going to be very brief, say about two or three minutes, but I would like to, you know, throw some light on how beautifully our body is designed and, you know, how magnificently it works. So we need to understand some very, you know, basics of it. Then we'll understand what is actually weakening the immune system. So this is unanimous for kids and adults. So both of uh, the categories fall into this purview. Then ways to correct the immunity through a healthy lifestyle. So firstly, we'll also be understanding the lifestyle needs. You know, food is one aspect of it, but we'll be, you know, briefly going through about the lifestyle needs as well. <clears throat> then we'll talk about uh, essential vitamins and minerals which are needed for kids' immunity to build kids' immunity. And lastly, uh, not, not last, actually second last, we'll talk about food and nutrition, that how it will, what kind of food items can we add, you know, how it will... Uh, <clears throat> what are, what is like you know the basics of uh, you know the food items that you know we can add to build kids immunity so this is what we'll be talking so let's first understand <clears throat> how does kids immunity work <clears throat> all right so let's take a very basic example in a day to day life you know we keep on getting hurt whether it's an adult or a kid we usually, let's take the most basic example that we are doing something and we prick our finger. So the child is playing with a stapler and he by chance, you know, pricks the top of the finger. Then what happens immediately? Now, when there is a cut, you know, the, there are a lot of organisms, microorganisms around us, which we can't see from the naked eye. And they are looking for host bodies, right? <clears throat> so their basic goal is to find a body and get in and survive and multiply. So this is what happens exactly when we get a cut, all the microorganisms that can find it, can find their way through it, they get inside and, you know, they try to seep in and find their place. Now, this is the, this is where the first line of, you know, defense comes into picture. The macrophages, you don't have to understand what they are. They are, a, they're the first line of defense. So macrophages, is a, they intervene and they immediately create inflammation. So, you know, <clears throat> have you ever noticed that, you know, you get a cut and it just gets, it gets a little swelled? That is exactly, you know, we can say that the immune system is working. Now, once the cut uh, uh, swells, it's inflamed. Then, you know, the third line, the second line, the third line, the fourth line, so, so on and so forth, different kinds of, you know, immune system comes into picture. And finally, if we talk about, you know, um, antibodies, which we are talking so much in post-COVID era, uh, whether it's for the kids or for adults, T cells, the last one in the in this whole, um, if you can see the, have a look at the screen, the last one, the T cells, they actually form the antibodies. So that is where you know the memory of uh, you know a particular infection stays, and the T cells register it. And once they register it, then the next time, the third time, the second time, any kind of infection of the same category intervenes in the body. The T cells generates those antibodies, and the immune system fights. So this is like a very, very generic understanding of the immune system that how our immune system works. Now let's understand what weakens our immune system. What are the basics of, uh, you know, the general things that, you know, we might be doing, which is weakening our, the immune system of the kids. So firstly, you know, uh, let's get to the first point, which is constant anxiety and trauma in the family. So see, 
uh, as adults we have more uh, you know understanding of uh, different kinds of things that are happening in the family but kids they don't talk much they absorb it and when they are looking at you know uh, things that are not going the be- in the best case scenario then generally <clears throat> you know they are they become anxious inside and that is the first and the most obvious and easiest way for the immunity to go down because you know science and studies suggest that you know when kid or the adult is in depression the immunity tends to go lower so that's first thing second point is gut health well you know gut health is so so important it's so imperative when you talk about having a good immune system now why is that so um, in layman terms our gut produces a gut uh, consists of a lot of you know viruses bacteria uh, fungus you know some good and some bad some we want some we don't want but you know there is a sort of you know balance and imbalance between them uh, which is going on all the time so the good guys the bacteria that we need and the bad guys the virus that we don't need are always you know fighting each other to you know i mean stay so like you know our body tries to survive in any situation it's the same with every living organism on planet earth these bacteria or virus are trying to survive so they are always you know um, anti each other they are the good is trying to win and the bad is trying to win now when the bad wins over the good the immunity goes low how the gut is responsible for producing a lot of you know um, these uh, good hormones the happy hormones i don't want to use any jargonic words because you know it's irrelevant in this particular presentation or in this particular topic but we have to understand that you know the good and the bad are always fighting and we want the good to win in order for a gut health to be better but when the bad is winning when the bad guys are winning that's when the gut health is going down um, we are, we will be discussing how to improve your gut health uh, how to improve kids gut health in the coming slides so don't worry about how to do that let's just first focus on the points that why our Im- immunity could be weak <clears throat> all right so that was gut health now let's move to antibiotics so we have to understand that you know antibiotics are being used left right center even when you know we can avoid it the child in the growing years is you know g- g- building the adaptive immune system he is getting different kinds of you know microorganisms from the environment and new kind of immunity is being building over time so what happens is when we are giving the child antibiotics or even for ourselves if we are taking antibiotics for any time or reason when we can skip it when we can put it at bay when we can hold it when we can let our body work what we do is we wipe out the good bacteria like i explained in the last point the good bacteria and the bad bacteria too much of use of antibiotics actually kills the good guys as well so now what we don't understand is that antibiotics cannot bifurcate between the good and the bad they'll just come and they'll wipe out so of course they will remove the bad but with the bad the good also goes so now <clears throat> when the good bacteria is wiped out and trust me it does say about um you know five days of antibiotic course which usually the doctor recommends on any you know common cold flu fever the basics it actually wipes out a great chunk of bacteria and for the kids this bacteria is like you know is is doing a lot of things in the body whether it's kid or adult but mostly kids because you know they are still uh, growing uh, a lot of you know systems are still coming up so in that case we need the good bacteria to a large extent to build the immunity even further but with the constant use of antibiotics the purpose gets defeated now vitamin d well you know whether kids are in the current scenario in the covid scenario we are not stepping out neither are we letting our kids step out even if they are going out we don't let them you know move out of the house in the in the best time zone where they can get the sunlight we all know that vitamin d is the harbinger uh, sunlight is the harbinger of vitamin d but we don't end up doing that we are we usually keep the kids indoors so when the vitamin d is low studies have you know there are, there are scientifically bad studies which says that low vitamin d means low immunity because <clears throat> whether we realize it or not vitamin d takes care of say about 10000 uh, processes in the body and we need it to an optimum category and lastly playing in dirt uh, <clears throat> have you realized that we after in the, in the covid era or post covid era uh, you know we are 
finicky about cleaning everything. We are finicky about using hand sanitizer. We are finicky about cleaning the floors. I know mothers, I knew new moms, I knew uh, moms of younger kids. Uh, they are always, you know, worried about the floor is, is dirty or, you know, the table is dirty. Uh, now what happens is, of course, cleanliness and hygiene is very important, but we have to understand that we can't, excess of everything, whether good or bad, is bad. So when we are cleaning out the area too much, we are using the hand sanitizers too much, we are actually killing the good bacteria as well. Kids uh, immunity uh, or kids gut health or the gut bacteria comes from the external environment as well. So there are two ways for the kids to get the bacteria in the body. One is through the mother when they are being born. Um, when, they, when, when, they are, when they are being born. So what happens is if there is a natural delivery, then the vagina of the lady has a lot of good bacteria and the kids and, and the child gets bathed in it. But apparently um, the science is more, uh, you know, dependent on cesareans now. So all the good bacteria that, you know, the child might get through the vaginal health is not able to get it. So if the child is born through cesarean C-sec, then, you know, the amount of good bacteria is less in the body. Then the second thing is the child gets the immunity through the environment. When the child is not exposed to the environment or exposed less or, you know, exposed to extremely clean environment, then what happens is he or she is not able to get those good guys even from the, from the environment. So one thing, if the immunity is anyway low because of the poor gut health, then the child is not playing outside. He's not allowed to, you know, get his hands dirty or, you know, be in the, in the natural surroundings. So he or she is not able to even be exposed to the better, um, you know, the good guys, the good bacteria. So the immunity even goes down. So these were some ways, you know, which we can say that, you know, are actually causing poor gut health or oh, sorry, we are actually causing lower immunity. Now let's understand, uh, this was the problem. So we all understand the problem, but today we joined here, we gathered here to, uh, to find the solution to the problem. So let's first understand that how through lifestyle we can actually boost the immunity. So firstly, let's talk about sleep. So, well, a lot of parents are extremely strict about kids, you know, sleep time, uh, TV time, play time, study time, and which is great. But um, in the post COVID era, things have gone haphazard. Uh, even for our own lifestyle and even for the kids lifestyle, we are not able to, you know, balance it out uh, in the best possible manner. In the most idealistic situation, we are not able to do it because now the schools are opening slowly and steadily, but not for all the categories. And especially for this age group that we are talking about, schools are still, you know, in the deciding phase. So when the kids are not sleeping on time, we have to understand that sleeping is not just, um, you know, it's not just, you know, giving you a fresh feeling the next day. Sleeping also, you know, helps the body go to places which needs attention. So what happens is when we are sleeping, uh, the body is going to different places uh, in the in the body itself to figure out to you know um, it's like you know repair uh, and you know doing certain things to repair and make it going further rejuvenate the body is the right word. Now when the kids are not doing that properly, when the kids are up till two and you know because the parents are up till two or one and you know so on and so forth, their immunity is not able their body is not able to repair the immune cells. The, the body is not able to you know. Uh, work in the best possible manner to support the immunity. So that's one of the reasons why immunity can go low. So we have to work on the sleep and we'll understand in the coming uh, slides how we can improve sleep very briefly. <clears throat> but sleeping for say about seven to nine hours and especially for kids say about 10 hours is, is important. Now we have to understand that when we are younger, the number of hours of sleep the body requires is more in comparison to the number of hours for the body to sleep required when we are above 15. So when the kids are between the age group of say about 3 to 12, they need more sleeping hours. So for the body to, you know, develop, for the body to do the repair work, so for the body to rejuvenate and work on, you know, different kinds of um, organ, um, you know, uh, hormones to be built and, you know, put into place. So make sure that the kids are sleeping say about 10 hours at least to boost immunity. Now let's talk about gut health. So I have already briefly touched on the, the aspect of gut health, but um, you know, I always focus on gut health a lot because you know, when that is going well, then you know, a lot of the other things just fall into place. So there's a saying for gut health that trouble hair means trouble everywhere. And it's a fact. 
so now like i explained earlier that you know the immunity of the child comes from uh, the mother from the food that the family is feeding the child and from the external environment so now that we are not stepping out in the external environment not so much if like you know earlier we would say we the kids would step out for 2 hours or 3 hours now kids are stepping out maybe you know half way through a half of half amount of the time so when that happens the exposure of the good bacteria is not happening so the immunity is bound to go low i will not waste time on this topic because i've already you know touched upon it in the past topic uh, in the past segment now let's talk about protein and immunity so to understand that protein um is not important just for the for the for you know um adults it's also important for the kids and it's actually um if i can say that it's more important for the kids because see the kids like i i say again and again are you know in the developing phase and they need more backup they need more support they need more uh, amount of protein for the bones for the muscles for you know the in, for for everything because you know everything is changing very fast as we age you know all the processes become slower gradually become slower of course not immediately but they start to become slower over the course of time now when uh, you know the protein is less then the very important uh, you know repair work of immune cells is not able to happen protein becomes the backbone of the immune system why because you know it helps in formulation of leukocytes phagocytes and cytokines well you don't have to understand the jargonic term but all of them are important some leukocytes cytokines and phagocytes are all very important aspects of a healthy in basic immune immune system we are not talking about you know antibodies here we are just talking about general line of defense that we have on a daily basis when we don't have enough protein through our food then that's where the problem that's where the issue so we have to understand that adding good amount of protein to the diet is very very important now mothers or you know family is always struggling with you know how to make the kid eat more protein well um there i the the scope of the presentation or the scope of the workshop doesn't um, you know allow me to discuss recipes but trust me there is like you know a vast majority of recipes which i usually give to my clients the mothers that you know i'm uh, i'm helping out uh, and you know kids love it so maybe you know having uh, if you if if the if you are a non vegetarian family and the kids also kids also eat non vegetarian then definitely focus on you know fish it's an amazing source of protein and also eggs and if you are a not if you are a vegetarian family then you know why not add some tofu and please make sure that tofu is organic and tofu is non processed and you will find it amply now there is no dearth of you know organic food items now because of so much of awareness thanks to you know covid has come up as you know both a boon and a bane so in the in in the whole scenario a lot of people have come up with good healthy habits and a lot of you know organic food is being pushed to our side which is great which earlier was not so easily and readily available so you can find organic tofu organic chicken organic fish you know very very easily there are plenty of sites always go for organic now um, very briefly i would like to say that often uh, people have this thing that you know organic is usually nothing it's basically just a way of charging more money trust me there's more to it there's more to story organic is a lot it helps you out in great ways you can't even imagine that it can um, it might be you know um, a little more um, expensive in comparison to the generic things but it comes with its own benefits and if you can i'm sure everyone here can please go for all organic items you can do and make sure that you know uh, if you're going for chicken and if you're going for eggs just look out for grass fed antibiotic free options like that you know because we are trying to create good uh, health for our kids but if we are giving them random chicken which we bought from you know a shop near our house or something like that they put a lot of antibiotics in the in in the animals now when they are, the animal meat or the animal um, Uh, the chicken or the or the, you know the meat or the fish has a lot of antibodies because of uh, antibiotics because of because they were fed when they were breeded that same thing goes to the kids body as well and goes to our body as well so we have to make sure that we don't do that rather not eat chicken rather not eat eggs than eating an antibody uh, antibiotic um, laden um, you know chicken or fish or egg you know 
yeah so moving on to the next slide second hand smoking well you know this is something which i'm sure a lot of people understand that you know second hand smoking shouldn't be the case for the kids health you know um general you know the general health of the of the child but we also have to understand that in this current scenario where immunity is of utmost important especially with you know news like the, the third wave that might be coming would be more impactful for the kids we have to understand that second hand smoke is actually wreaking havoc on their immunity so <clears throat> uh, you know whether it's the father whether it's the mother whether it's anyone in the family who is smoking firstly it's not good for anybody secondly if you must you should find out places where the child is nowhere near it's not even in the same room and you are in the balcony or you are in the bathroom the smoke still goes you have to find out a separate area totally or maybe step out or whatever is possible at your end or leave it for the kids sake whatever you know uh, sails your boat but the kid should not be subjected to second hand smoke at all uh, last point for uh, you know the lifestyle is exercise and immunity now we all understand that exercising is important especially the mothers they understand that exercising is important because you know to get in shape or to you know stay healthy so on and so forth but we have to build in the culture of exercise because uh, you know if we if we teach our kids to you know work out uh, exercise say yoga say you know the basic uh, hula hoops or you know uh, the basic activities like hide and seek which we used to play when we were kids you know we had good exposure to you know physical movement we would go out we would do things we would run we would cycle but because you know in covid era we are not stepping out that much we have to build in ways uh, in the house to help the kids uh, exercise more because it's not just about how um, you know how tall they'll become or how much weight they will uh, you know uh, gain or not gain it's about the immunity right now and good exercise as a family if you build in that culture if you build in that tradition if you build in those habits it will stick with them throughout their lives so uh, you know i'd like to share that the first 7 years of a child's life um, you know are the building block whatever you learn in the first 7 years of your 1 to 7 years of your life that becomes the base of your life these are the childhood experiences which will go with you till 60 till 70 till 80 god knows when till the time you are alive it will stay with you so make sure uh, that uh, you uh, focus on uh, you know uh, creating a culture uh, you know maybe you can uh, you know just help them join a dance class which is online or maybe you get along with them or you do uh, the just a minute is the folder sorry so uh, you know you build it uh, as a culture in the family so that is really important we have to understand that food is important we have to understand that nutrition is a lot but it's not the end all be it all we have to incorporate good lifestyle as well for you know uh, building immunity in the first place all right so moving on to the next topic or the next segment we will talk about some supplements or some nutrition actually so i am not talking about here uh that the kids should be given supplements but this is basically you know me saying that you know some nutrients uh, are important to be added into your diet if you want to boost immunity yeah so let's first understand vitamin a so i'll speak about say five or six uh, essential nutrients or uh, minerals or vitamins which we can add to our diet so vitamin a has carotenoids um or in layman terms uh, we can say that you know the 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 a that we get from the carrots so we have to understand that vitamin a is uh, you know unanimously spread over a lot of fruits and vegetables so carrots are a great source of vitamin a but that's not all you can add leafy greens and all yellow fruits uh, yellow and orange fruits and vegetables have vitamin a so whether it's capsicum whether uh, sorry whether yeah whether it's yellow capsicum whether it's zucchini yellow zucchini whether it's uh, you know a mangoes all right the so we have 5 minutes before we go on a break uh yeah so we, we are talking about vitamin a currently so leafy greens and all kinds of you know animal proteins also have uh, vitamin a so if you are a vegetarian or if you are an over vegetarian that you, that you know you just eat eggs well that's great add eggs to your diet because eggs 
not only contains vitamin A, it contains a lot of other nutrients, which I'll be talking about coming forward, which will help the child a lot in building immunity, of course. Now, the, the second uh, vitamin is vitamin C. Well, there is no ro rocket science about vitamin C. Uh, citrus, citrus foods, of course, they contain vitamin C, but there are other fruits like papaya, which is still in season. Mango, it's now not in season, but for future purposes, mango is great. There is no harm in eating mango. You can eat one mango every day and nothing is going to happen. And kids can eat about you know, two mangoes, but we have to manage their sugar intake as well for overall wellness and fitness. And of course, immunity because, well, let's not get about sugar. Um, that's a separate topic. So uh, then there is avla, the gooseberry, Indian gooseberry that we get. Uh, very easily in winters it's vividly available even today it's available in the current um, you know weather conditions so you can have a look at that uh yeah so also peppers you know pepper contains a lot of vitamin c and it increases immunity to a large extent so red bell peppers yellow bell peppers um alapinos uh thick bell peppers or you know the, the smaller ones peppers that we get peppers of any kind contains capsian which is like you know uh is like an element from the pepper family which increases immunity to a large extent so definitely definitely add that now uh, talking about zinc well zinc is uh, great for you know gut health repair as well so i have already uh, you know in, in the past slides explained why gut health is so important now what happens is um, zinc is unfortunately not very you know readily available in the vegetarian um, uh, spectrum so, you know, you would find zinc to be lacking in the vegetarian diet. So there are two ways to go about it. Either, you know, you can eat legumes, you can eat millets, nuts. Well, you will get uh, some amount of it, but the amount that, you know, we need in the current scenario uh, can't suffice in, in, the, in just like the vegetarian spectrum. So you have to add a supplement. Now, when you talk about supplements, parents are always skeptical that whether we can give supplements to the kids or not. Well, you can. If the kid is, if the child is five plus, then you can. But always consult an expert. Always consult your doctor. You know, to to go about uh, zinc, to go about any kind of supplements to kids' diet. Now, talking about non-vegetarian people, well, you have no dearth of it. All kind of animal meats, especially eggs, will have good amount of zinc in it. But if you are, uh, if you can find you know, your hands to seafood like seaweed or oysters, which I'm not sure how much we can find in, in like, you know, in the area that we are or in area that you are, you can find oysters. Oysters are the richest source of zinc. So if you can, if you are out somewhere and you can get, get it, then do make sure that your kids get zinc to a certain amount. All right. Um, Devika, should we take a break right now or uh, like, should we, like, how do we go about it? If you, if you have one more slide to go, Sonali, then I think we can just do that. We do have six more minutes left. Okay, great. And then we can go, off, go on break and come back just for questions and answers. Yes, definitely. All right. So moving on to selenium. So selenium is, uh, again, you know, a trace mineral. You will not find it very readily in normal food items. But of course, you know, the nuts or you know uh, the legumes are rich of it so definitely legumes is uh, you know our rajma chole the kidney beans the chickpeas um, the white beans you know so on and so forth uh, the legumes have it the wal walnuts is a great source chia seeds are a great source and then of course the seafood seafood is great if you are a non-vegetarian to go for but make sure that you know you are not eating fish or too much of seafood uh, in a week's time because uh, these days seafood also has mercury in it and we don't want um, even the adults for that matter if I can briefly touch upon it um, you know we have to look out for it so you know the amount of toxins that we can find in any kind of food items whether no matter it's organic or not because the, the use of the pesticides in the basics in the, in, the, in, the, in the foundation is so much that you know it's actually impossible to remove completely so yeah that's that now, the last point uh, before we go on a break is omega-3. So omega-3, uh, for, for, you know, for the kids, definitely adds almonds, walnuts, fenugreek seeds, flax seeds, you know, mustard oil and uh, chia seeds and so many, you know, the seeds and the nuts are rich of it. But if the child is suffering from any kind of, you know, condition, 
um, in, a, in, in, in like whether it's an autoimmune condition or any kind of, you know, um, thing which is prolonged, then adding a supplement of omega-3 is a must. Again, um, we can't get into supplements on at, which doesn't allow the purview of the workshop, doesn't allow to get into the nitty-gritty of the supplements, but always check for EPA and DHA. You might want to write this down. EPA and DHA should be about 500 for all kinds of omega-3, whether you're an adult, whether you're a child, you need that. So make sure you have at least, for the kids, it should be at least 300 to 500. And for the adults, it should be 500 plus. EPA and DHA are two um, components of omega-3, which should be at least this much. So, um, we have, uh, you know, one or two more slides left, but I think we'd uh, go on a break right now and be joining at 12.10, uh, at Devika, is it right? Yes. Yeah. All right. So uh, a new link would be shared with you or it might have already been shared with you. So I'll see you all at 12.10. Uh, yeah. With the be uh, ready with your questions. All right. See you. Thank you so much. See you, everyone. And now I'll just share my screen quickly. All right. So uh, we'll talk about, you know, some quick ways. We'll, share, uh, we'll talk about some quick ways to boost immunity through food. Well, I've discussed quite a few pointers, but you know, this is really important to add probiotic and prebiotic food in your diet. Now, uh, very briefly, probiotic is something which feeds the bacteria which is already in your stomach and prebiotic is something uh, which, you know, sorry, prebiotic is something which feeds the bacteria in the stomach and probiotic brings in new bacteria. So the curd uh, is the most basic Curd and cheese are the most basic things which you can find in Indian households in a kitchen. So, you know, definitely add that at least once in a day to your child's diet. Then fermented veggies, you know, uh, the achars or the pickles or the chutneys that we make at home, are not store-bought, but, you know, homemade. The kanjis that we make, whether it's summers or, you know, I mean, the, the pickles come in the winter, you know, the, those fermented uh, carrots and radish and cauliflower, which our moms usually make or our grandmoms usually make, they are amazing. So do add that as much as you can in your kid's diet. Then, uh, you know, if you talk about some continental things, then there is kombucha, there's kefir, there's kimchi, there's sauerkraut, and all of these things can be store-bought. They're fine, no problems. If you want to make it at home, then nothing better than that. So do make it at home. The YouTube again, or, you know, the internet is again full of recipes with these giant experiment. I'm sure you would love them. Now, uh, another way to in boost a child's immunity is, uh, you know, grating two avlas and, you know, squeezing the juice out of it and adding one teaspoon of honey to it and consuming it. You can write these points down because, you know, these are time tested. Uh, avlas contains vitamin C. Honey is known to, you know, sweeten the avla and, of course, you know, build in the immunity even more if the honey is organic and natural. Then definitely this is a very good point. Then I have already spoken about, you know, adding protein rich diet to your food. Then lastly, bell peppers, again, spoken about it. Ginger. So, you know, if you can add ginger to the food, of course, Indian households, we do add maybe, you know, if the child is suffering through any common food, cold or flu, you know, you can add, give them ginger water. So grate like a, a small piece of an inch piece of ginger, grate it and boil it in water, strain it and give the water to the child. If you want, you can add a little bit of lemon to it if the throat is, is fine. If the throat is not fine, what you can do is you can add ginger, you can add lemon and maybe, you know, a dash of honey to, you know, soothe out the, the tanginess of uh, ginger and lemon. And lastly, papaya and kiwi again for the uh, vitamin C. So these were some points. Um, and now, uh, we'll move on to the question and answer section so that you know everyone can get ample time to ask their questions so i'm going to stop my screen sharing now and uh, let's get to the questions i'm i'm all ears yeah ishu wants to ask the question first yeah. Go ahead. hi hi first of all thank you uh, you have covered like uh, i think each and everything and very good knowledge which you have shared thank so uh, thank you for that and uh, I would like to ask that uh, I have twins. They're uh, three, three and a half years old. 
and i'm pretty much happy with the diet they are taking right now because uh, due to covid obviously they are not going out they are not going school or they are not going anywhere else much so they are just going to the family places only right. so ever diet i started uh, for them since they were one so they are eating all the fruits and vegetables or everything whatever i cook for them so i'm pretty much happy about it whatever they are taking right now so my concern is once they start going to school i heard from many parents because then they create their own group they will meet other children or they will go out also then for the parties and all so they will indulge into the junk food they will get to know about it my point is right now i don't indulge them into junk uh, very often so now uh, right now they are having uh, you can say junk food uh, once a week or maybe uh, once in 15 days Yes. so once they start going out they will indulge themselves into the junk food quite often mm. so then how we can i would not, not like to say how we would control it how we can fix that up see now what happens is if a child is stepping out you know you can't be uh, you know noticing them or over their heads all the time they might you know be doing things with their peers which you might even not know so the only thing as a as a parent you can do is you know train them in the house as much as you can you can help them understand the good and the bad of the foods and you know give them a basic understanding of you know i mean uh, what happens and you know always when when you talk about children you have to you know give them choices rather than saying this is not good uh, you have to tell them that you know if you eat this and this would happen would you want that to happen to yourself you know you have to train their mind in such a way that when they are out you know they make a better choice on their own because um, you know uh, it's not possible to you know control to have a check all the time so uh, well this is the only thing that you know you can do at home yeah so my point is uh... yeah sorry yeah uh, so my point is they themselves asked me uh, mama please give me a bowl of broccoli so for example for example okay so they like broccoli very much they themselves ask me mama give me a bowl of broccoli and i give them and they eat it also but if there is a choice they would definitely choose ice cream over broccoli i i am not saying they will not eat broccoli but they will choose <laughs> ice cream over broccoli and no. this is for every kid i think you know what happens is um, you have to you know create a balance if they want to choose ice cream sometimes it's fine because you know yeah. um, their body needs more than what our body needs you know right. so uh, maybe uh, the too much sugar is bad for us maybe you know a little bit of sugar is not bad for them so right. if they are doing it in moderation in in a generic sense if they are doing it in moderation for anything whether it's ice cream whether it's a pizza just make sure that if you are with them and you are out then you know you help them uh, understand that you know if you are eating a pizza add more veggies to it ask for more veggies you know if you are eating fries then don't take ketchup with it because you know uh, it is just like added sugar but they don't understand what it is so you know making them aware of the smaller things because you know the bigger the, you can't control the ice cream but maybe you can control the portion you can tell them ki aapko ek hi you know scoop khana hai you know right. you have to figure it out that, you know what is something that will work for, with them and also it's a it's it's like a time thing you know you can't do it once and expect them to learn right. it for their life you have to repeat it and repeat it till the time it doesn't get imbibed in their subconscious mind so that they do it like that because i know uh, people uh, who have children who are vegan they don't even have milk so now they are also concerned that you know when the kids are going to step out then they don't know that this thing contains milk or not and this thing is this or not so they train their kids in such a way that you know they they understand the good and the bad and then the choice is on them what they are choosing. yeah thank you so much okay. yeah anyone else yeah hi sam i have a question sorry i'm unable to connect my yeah No so yeah uh, i really want to ask you that since my child she is you know allergic to calcium stuff the milk products basically right. so what supplements should i substitutes that i should include so that it does not hamper her growth or immunity for that matter see uh, if she is um, lactose intolerant is she lactose intolerant no she is not lactose intolerant but it is a milk protein that she is intolerant okay maybe she is allergic yeah. to whey maybe she is allergic to casein so you are concerned is ki calcium you want to increase calcium in her diet yes exactly so firstly what you can do is instead of going to supplements because you know um, 
supplements are synthetic to a certain extent, no matter how amazing they are. You can add sesame seeds to her diet. What you can do is you can one spoon of sesame seed, you can soak it overnight. And in the next okay. one, just grind it with a little bit of water. Ek white sa, you know, you will get a paste. So right. actually, you can mix it in, you know, anything that you're giving it to her, like, uh, like say, you know, any kind of juice or something. If that doesn't work, then maybe, you know, just mix it in plain water and tell her that this is milk and, you know, give it to her. So mm-hmm. that it, ha- it has more calcium than, you know, any, uh, any dairy product would have. So all your worry about calcium would just go out of the window because one spoon of sesame seeds every day would suffice for everything else. So you can do that. Okay, okay, great. Thank you. Thanks for the suggestion. I think it will be very helpful. And thank you for the session as well. Thank you. So ma'am, uh, the sesame seed, the soaked sesame seed can be given in summers also? Yeah. So that's why I'm saying when you soak them, the all the, you know, the heat of the the seed gets you know absorbed in the water so you throw okay. that water and you uh, you know grind them in fresh water so that the na- the what about fox nuts even they are rich in calcium yes they are but uh, you know calcium uh, what happens is uh, fox nuts are also very high on carbs now we want the kids to you know eat the if we have to choose between two then i would say sesame seeds but if the kids is okay. not eating that then maybe you know fox nuts fox nut is a great uh, but we always tend to, you know, go overboard with fox nuts. Fox nuts, yeah, especially when they're, uh, you know, roasted. Yeah. Yes. Huh. Right. Thank you, ma'am. Welcome. What's the other question? If anyone has one. Hi. Um. I had a question. Um. Uh, my child is very prone to uh, constipation and very regularly, uh, you know, she has uh, issues and then she goes through a very bad spell Then I have to give her some medicine. Mm-hmm. So uh, her diet is okay, but sometimes she tends to have uh, things that cause, uh, you know, constipation. So uh, would you suggest any specific things for her uh, in terms of how I can improve her digestion? Is she drinking enough water? I want to ask the basic question. How much water is she drinking? Yeah, I think she drinks enough, like as much as we can. But yeah, she's very fond of uh, Ruabza water. I think maybe because of that, she's having more of that sometimes compared to normal water. But she does have enough water, I feel. So you have, you have to understand that nothing in this world is a substitute for water. No matter what it is, it cannot substitute plain, simple water. So, and secondly, Rob's water would contain a lot of, you know, sugar and she's having that more because, you know, it, sugar is very addictive and kids don't understand the good and the bad. So, you know, they like it. So they're like, I want more of it. So firstly, if you can somehow reduce or remove it, then, you know, okay. that will be, you know, the first line of action. And secondly, you know, if she's having constant constipation, then, you know, try adding some, you know, um, Simple probiotic rich foods, you know, maybe, you know, uh, was, was she a cesarean child? Yeah. Yeah. So what happens is, like I explained earlier that, you know, when the child is not going through the vagina and coming out, then what happens is the good bacteria from the mother's vagina. Yeah. Mm. So uh, when that happens, uh, well, you know, the gut health is not the best, we can say. It's not, it's not bad, but it's not optimum. So for that, you need to add some curd, you need to add some, you know, uh, homemade pickles, chutneys, which, you know, which we, we make at home. Maybe in summers you can add kanji, not now because the weather is not very conducive for it. Um, also, you know, if you can get your hands on making some basic kefir, kwas, you know, those probiotic things you will find on internet very easily. You'll find good recipes. Try that. They are very interesting. They are tasty. They are fizzy and kids like it. So, you know, firstly, add that. Then, uh, of course, water, plain water, a lot of it. Then thirdly, chia seeds. So chia seeds, what happens is you have to soak it in the water. So, for example, uh, you you want to give uh, her or him at 12 p.m. So you soak them at, you know, 11 maybe in, in, in a glass of water. And, you know, then maybe, you know, dilute it into anything that you can. Maybe like a juice, maybe like a smoothie, maybe in coconut water. You know, you mix it and, you know, make it make it a fun game and then give it to them. When you give chia seeds, you know, uh, it's, it is very rich on fiber and it, it will soak the water which it is um, being soaked in. So it will, you know, help in um, bowel movement largely. So you can do that. Okay. But Thank how much of that. chia seeds in um, a day, say? Um, so for, for kids, you know, maybe one, one to one and a half uh, tablespoon. For adults, two to three tablespoons is good. 
per constipation not talking about weight not talking about anything yeah but- no uh, otherwise uh, chia seeds are good for them so without uh, if they're not constipated as a uh, anyone can take it you know i mean they are a yeah, I, I know but how much one yeah, teaspoon like, should be okay one teaspoon is fine if they have constipation then maybe one and a half to three two teaspoon uh, tablespoon not teaspoon uh, so like you know i mean the normal spoon that we have in the house yeah uh, not the desert spoon the normal spoon yeah uh, that that one two i'm talking about that that uh, right okay okay thank you so much Sonali, I think I'm repeating myself. I was just wondering how much of sugar can a child have? Because, you know, they love to uh, eat candies. And, of course, boys especially, they love sweet things. Now what happens is uh, they are not to be blamed because, you know, sugar has opioid-like effect. You know, like how opioids or the drugs are. They create, they activate the pleasure center in the mind. So we want more and more. And, you know, in our... um, learnings they, we were told that if you want a child to be attracted to you just mix uh, <laughs> sugar to water and give them one or two three times and make sure the child is looking at you so the pleasure center will get activated by the sugar but since he's looking at you he will think that you are the one who's giving him the pleasure so he'll always be very happy around you very so that good. is the power of sugar so now what well, I, I could use that <laughs> <laughs> it, it should work so uh, but what what What's the idle amount? Uh, idly say about, uh, you know, six teaspoons of sugar uh, for, you know, any individual out there for the, for the child. Six teaspoons is say about 24 grams. So it's a rough estimate. Um, depend, depends on the age, height, weight of the child. But still, you know, a rough estimate would be six teaspoons, not more than that. And trust me, if the child is eating too much of candies, he's definitely consuming more than that. So, well, we just, you just have to create a balance uh, with the candies and the food. And what everything. are the harms? What are the harms? Because you know how parents are, they say, what, how is it going to harm them? So just to tell them that, uh, you know, uh, it, totally, it, totally, totally, you know, a vast topic. And you know, one of my favorites because people don't really understand, you know, the side effects of sugar, but yeah. in, to say it in a few points, um, I would say that, uh, firstly, it will, uh, create inflammation in the body, which is again, you know, if we, if you connect it to the topic that we're talking currently about, the immunity is going to go low. So okay. with just sugar. So, and also when you talk about sugar, we have to understand that fruits are great, but they also have sugar in it. And the body doesn't bifurcate between this sugar is coming from processed food. This sugar is very sugar true. It doesn't happen like that. It is sugar for the body. So it will treat it like sugar. So the growth of the child is going to get affected with it because, you know, the child is, the body is busy uh, the, in, in like, you know, controlling the sugar through, you know, insulin release in the body. So, you know, the growth factor the immunity, and um, well, the weight, you know, I mean, of course. Someone told me it hampers the brain development also. Of course it does. You know, again, it, it would cover in the inflammation point. When okay. the, when any food item for that matter is creating inflammation in the body, it not only you know affects the gut it also affects the gut the uh, blood brain barrier so the brain has a barrier around it so so that the nutrients or the anything doesn't come in and out but extreme amount of sugar would create inflammation and can actually scientifically proven can you know create uh, uh, the blood brain bra- barrier to be broken and obviously leading to you know reduced brain development there thank you ms sonali we have shivi who is the uh who wants to ask the question and then we can move on to Arna's mom and then we can probably wrap this issue. Yeah, sure. So should we? I think she's connecting. Yes. Uh, I think there's a network issue. In the meantime, can we go with the uh, next person? Yes, Anna's mom. Yeah, uh, I have one more question regarding immunity, basically. So since kids are at home most of the time these days, they are, you know, they are all time in the very protective and hygienic environment. So uh, basically, when we talk about increasing their immunity naturally while playing with sand and stuff like that, so this is not happening these days. So what do you suggest? I mean, how should we, you know, inculcate that sort of immunity into our children's body? 
see um, at home what you can do is the food bit and the lifestyle bit because that's you know the only, you or what you can do is if you have a garden in the house or if you have a balcony in the house maybe you know you can get some mud uh delivered because amazon is also del- amazon is delivering everything currently so you know maybe you can have those things and you can have them play with that maybe build sand castles maybe you know um help them uh, you know plant uh, plants like get smaller pots and help so this will not only teach them how to you know support life around them it will also you know give them exposure to the bacteria in the soil so you can definitely do that uh, these are some you know fun activities also to do in the house so i have spoken about the lifestyle and the food of course so you can incorporate that and you know maybe a few of these things will you know be able to make up for not going out great thank you welcome um i'm can i go next yeah shivi yes yeah, shivi Yeah. Hi, Snali. Uh, thank you so much for the insightful session, and uh, it was absolutely um, amazing. My question is that uh, my son, he's four, four and a half, so he's he's a very active kid, and he's been fortunate that the lockdown has not uh, hampered him from playing outside. In fact, he's playing more outside because we are in a different setup. But at the same time, I see that you know uh, he's so much now. involved in play that his nutrition takes a back seat his eating takes a back seat and because uh, he's mostly outside he's playing with in the soil he's playing and i don't stop him also he's playing with pets so he's catching a lot of infections mm. so he's probably you know sick after almost every uh, every month mm. so so uh, how do i how do i build his immune system see uh, one of the tips that i gave in the session was to add avla with honey to the diet so uh, vitamin c mm-hmm. now it's not a everyone knows that vitamin c is the best thing out there when you when you want to increase your immunity so take two avlas grate it squeeze it and add some lemon uh, add some honey to it and have make him have the first thing in the morning just do it for a for like four weeks and you know i mean in my understanding this should help a lot and secondly you know maybe you know adding some kind of uh, you know whenever he's eating make sure that a bowl of salad a bowl of you know uh, broccoli a bowl of you know leafy greens is there in the food if he doesn't eat that then find interesting recipes of course uh, through internet or through someone uh, wherever you can find them make those interesting things and the food is going to look interesting children usually end up you know trying and eating them but the avla bit should help a lot thank you thank you i'll try that avla Hi. Right, so the last question is by uh, Samara's mom, and then we'll close the session. And in case parents have more questions for Miss Sonali, you, you can always add them on um, the Educa post, where we shared uh, the workshop details with the parents. Or you can email them to the info ID, and I'll be happy to take them on with Miss Sonali and get back to the parents. We have limited time, and I think we have already extended. So last question, Samara's mom. Yeah. Hi. Thank you so much. Wow. Actually, my question is: uh, My daughter, she is two point five, and she is developing a lot of rash issues during this weather around her hand and mainly the urine area. Mm-hmm. So I have started with homeopathy, and it's uh, just not going away, mm-hmm. and it's like it's very difficult. So can you like really guide me what to do? Because I'm also giving a amla candies and all of that, but since you said that you know the sugar intake should be less. so what uh, other option than giving her the uh, amla juice because she will not have it it's right. very difficult um see smaira we have to understand that the rash is happening because of the uh, antihistamine response in the body so she is definitely allergic to something either through food or through environment so you know honestly if i talk about food it's a slow thing whether you talk about homeopathy or food it it will take a while to you know show its impact so in the current scenario you have to you know i mean reach out to traditional medicine allopathic medication and show her to a doctor because uh you know the hives or the rashes you know that she's getting on the hands or anywhere in the body says that you know there is something in the environment that is not working out for her and you asap you need to figure out what it is so um don't go towards the food at this point in time or to homeopathy go to a doctor and find it out because um, you know i can suggest food items but they will take time to show impact so okay, okay thank you 
you're welcome so uh, i would like to end the session now if you want to find me i'm available on instagram by the name the wellness table i have added uh, in the chat box if this interests you you want to like you know i mean have daily updates then you can follow me um, if you have more questions then share it with devika and i'll be happy to answer them have a great day guys thank I you so much ms sonali it was a brilliant session thank you bye bye honestly i think thank everybody you. enjoyed it very informative thank you so much very informative. thank you everyone bye all right bye, -bye.